turning to the north again, um, two neighboring countries again, the Czech Republic and, and Slovakia is, is coming up first, Sabina. Uh, We'll tell about the change. We'll tell about the changes in in the in the Czech Republic. Hello, Barbaras. Thank you for your introduction and uh, good morning to everyone from Rainy Prague. Uh, I'm also really glad to participate in this event uh, where we can all uh, share our experience uh, with recent trends. Uh, well, my presentation will be divided into three sections. Uh, first, we'll uh, deal uh, with uh, some kind of overview of the legal situation in the Czech Republic. Uh, the second one will be uh, focused on home working. And in the third one, uh, I will touch uh, some another flexible arrangements, arrangements under Czech law. Uh, to start, to sum it up uh, from the beginning, uh, as of 12 March 2020, a state of national emergency, uh, a state of national emergency has been declared in the Czech Republic by Czech government uh, in response to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the state of emergency lasted until 17 May, uh, and unfortunately, uh, we have been declared another state of emergency on 5th of October as the Czech Republic was quite hardly uh, hit by the second wave of COVID-19. Uh, but back to the first wave, uh, additional emergency measures were partly taken uh, by the Czech government uh, as of uh, 16 March uh, in order to slow down the spread of the epidemic. As a result, many businesses uh, had been uh, forced to close uh, all of a sudden. And for these purposes, government approved a targeted employment support program, uh, which was uh, uh, which should help uh, companies to compensate uh, salaries paid to employees uh, when not able to work due to quarantine or due to business closure. Uh, currently, uh, as of tomorrow, uh, we have some further restrictions. Uh, all restaurants, bars uh, will be also closed. And since uh, last Friday, all fitness centers, uh, wellness centers, and other uh, other uh, other activities uh, which are not really uh, economically uh, and not economically uh, required for employees to be involved are also shut down. Uh, as regards of offices, uh, they were not required to suspend their businesses. Uh, however, a government issued a general recommendation arguing uh, for them to allow their employees working from home uh, where possible. Therefore, offices were presented with the challenge not only of quickly ad adapting their working conditions to adhere to this uh, recommendation uh, by implementing all necessary tools and measures, including IT solutions, but also of implementing the remote working model in a manner compatible with labor law which is not really sufficient in this respect in the Czech Republic. Uh, compared to Slovakia, no special regulation uh, regarding uh, work from home uh, has, been, and has been adopted uh, in connection with COVID-19 uh, outbreak, even though a significant update to the Czech labor code uh, has been pre presented recently. Uh, currently, uh, the regulation concerning the home working in the Czech Republic is not very detailed. And only one provision uh, in the Czech Labor Code uh, deals with the work from home. Uh, there were some bill proposals to ex uh, extend uh, the existing home working regulation and to better specify, specify the employees' rights and obligations when working from home. Uh, however, none of these proposals have been approved yet. Uh, as already mentioned, only one provision concerns the work from home in the Czech Republic. And under this provision, uh, the remote working is defined as an employee who does not work uh, at the employer's workplace, uh, but perform work for the employer uh, wherever, according to any conditions, during working hours that are distributed by the employee himself or herself. Uh, in this case, provisions regarding a suspension, uh, suspension of work due to natural disasters or uh, downtime shall not apply. 
apply and the employee is not neither entitled to any statutory extra pay for overtime work, work during bank holidays or selective impediments uh, to work on the side of the employee uh, as the right, uh, as the employee is as actually responsible to distribute uh, his or her working hours. So uh, he or she should do it in a manner uh, not to affect uh, the works, the standard usual working hours. Uh, when the right to distribute the working hours will remain with the employer, uh, this provision will not apply and the general uh, rules of the check labor code will remain in force. Uh, generally, the employer cannot order to the employee to work from home, even though, uh, even though where this special uh, situation occurs, as was a uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and always uh, employees consent uh, this arrangement is required. Uh, since the change of the agreed workplace represents uh, the change of the employment agreement, uh, this change must be always uh, made in writing. Therefore, if the employee's workplace is changed, uh, regardless uh, if there's change uh, on the temporary or permanent, in addition to the employment uh, agreement or a separate uh, agreement with the employee uh, must be entered. Uh, entered. Uh, the agreement on home working should include, among the others, uh, the employee's consent uh, with the home working. These are her obligations when working from home, uh, including obligations concerning occupational and health and safety rules, and protections of the employer's trade secrets uh, and sensitive data, uh, including arrangement regarding the reimbursement of the cost incurred uh, in connection with your work uh, outside of your employer's workplace. Further terms can also be uh, regulated in internal uh, companies policies, which are much more flexible uh, than uh, sole agreements with employees, as they can be changed by the employer at any time without uh, employees' consent. They must only be duly uh, acquainted with any changes. The employer should provide the employee with all equipment necessary as working uh, in the office or at the usual workplace. Unless uh, the employer agree uh, agrees with the employee that uh, the employee will use some of uh, his or her own equipment, such as uh, desk or, or chair or so on. In such a case, the employer and the employee should also agree on the reimbursement of these year and tier costs. With respect to occupational uh, health and safety rules, uh, one of the basic obligations of the employer is, of course, to ensure safety at the workplace and to assess all potential risks uh, which may occur uh, during the performance of work. Therefore, prior the employee uh, commences uh, any work remotely, uh, the employer should inspect the employer's workplace and assess uh, whether uh, this workplace uh, meets uh, the safety uh, rules or requirements. Uh, in practice, this is not uh, really, uh, this is not really, uh, it's not really uh, usual and, and there are not uh, some frequent inspections from uh, the labor uh, inspection authorities. Uh, however, for these purposes, uh, the employee's home, home address should be precisely stipulated uh, in the home working agreement or in any other similar agreement, uh, and exchanges should be uh, subject to the employer's uh, consent. Further issues is related to reimbursement of costs when working from home. Uh, under the law, the employer must uh, reimburse the employee for any costs uh, incurred uh, in connection with the employment, uh, and this obligation shall also apply when the employee is working from home. Uh, as the proving real cost is quite difficult, uh, the standard practice is to agree some uh, lump sum fee. However, this is quite uh, complicated from a tax perspective, as uh, there were some uh, opinions from tax committee that only some of these costs uh, can be reimbursed on the lump sum fee basis. And in particular, for instance, uh, electricity or internet uh, should be calculated on the real consumption. Uh, these are uh, the reimbursement of these costs are not subject subject to the security deductions such as income tax or social security contribution. 
what is the most important thing in this respect is that the employee cannot legally pay uh, to be reimbursed for these costs. So it's it's not uh, possible to agree uh, with the employee that uh, this cost will be uh, already included in the salary or in any other part of uh, employee's remuneration. As the regulation regarding home working lacks any details, I would like to touch another flexible arrangements uh, concerning shorter working hours. Uh, where basically working hours under the Czech Labor Code uh, must not exceed 40 uh, hours per week. Uh, there's a special regulation for minor employees and also some uh, further reductions for employees working in shift and non-stop regime. Uh, generally, the Czech Labor Code distinguish between shorter working hours and reduced working hours. Shorter working hours under statutory limits can be agreed only upon the agreement with the employee. This is a standard part-time uh, agreement, and in such a case, the employee is entitled uh, to salary corresponding uh, to this uh, shorter working hours. However, uh, the employer can also uh, can also stipulate shorter working hours, which are in this case called reduced working hours uh, in internal regulation or uh, upon the agreement with trade unions were established. And in such a case, there are no uh, reductions to salaries. Uh, furthermore, with an employee, the employee can agree uh, on flexible hours uh, after the discussion with trade unions uh, were applicable. And under this format, employee chooses uh, the start and finish times of the working day, but the employer can uh, stipulate some specific core times uh, when the employee must be available for the employer or for the business partners and clients of the employer. Uh, in addition, uh, employees may also use a so-called shared workplace, uh, which is a completely new legal concept uh, adopted by a recent, a recent significant update to the Labour Code, uh, and it becomes effective from 1st January of the next year. Uh, in this case, the employer can agree with two or more employees working shorter working hours of um, the same scope of work that they will share, uh, they will share one job position. Uh, the employer will uh, and will uh, sign the agreement with each employee involved. And uh, under this concept, employees actually uh, schedule uh, the working hours themselves to meet a statutory uh, statutory working hours in the amount of uh, forty hours. And this limit can be reached uh, within consecutive uh, for uh, calendar weeks. Uh, the, the, uh, the employees uh, involved should uh, submit uh, their schedule to the employee at least one week in advance, and if they fail to do so, the employer uh, is allowed itself to uh, schedule the working hours of the employees. Any changes should be, uh, should be notified to the employer at least two days in advance. Uh, it is really flexible to terminate uh, the shared workplace. There is only 15 day a notice period. Uh, however, this does not mean that uh, the employment of the employees involved will be terminated. They will continue in their work under the standard employment agreement uh, entered before previously, uh, usually on the part time on the part time agreement. Uh, so from my point of view is uh, all. So thank you for the attention and I will be happy to receive any questions. Well, thank you very much. Um, that was that was very interesting. I see there is again developments in, in terms of, 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 of shared workplace. And in terms of questions, I will actually listen first um, um, the 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 um, um, Swabian part, uh, and then we are moving towards the uh, uh, to the question uh, 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 section. Uh, so, Sabina, once again, thank you, and Susanna, Joseph. Thank you, Barnabas, for a short introduction. Good morning to everyone from Bratislava. Uh, my name is Susanna Hodenova, and this is my colleague uh, Josef Vici. Oh. We are both handling employment matters in both ties, uh, Bratislava. 
So let's start for Slovakia. So when COVID-19 uh, first time appeared in Slovakia uh, in March 2020, many employers took immediate action and sent their employees to work from their homes, obviously. Home office has become a quick solution for employers and employees where the scope of work allowed employees to work from. It is now, unfortunately, very obvious that COVID-19 won't just disappear, and even if it eventually will, the consequences will remain, and thus it is important to discuss also other more permanent uh, solutions for employers and their employees other than home office alone. We would like to summarize uh, that in the Slovak Labour Code, it is recognized as a home office arrangement like home office, home work, and health. And this presentation mainly focuses on these legal institutes that currently resonate the most among employers. So we will discuss them in more detail on the following slide. As regards uh, flexible working arrangements, uh, in comparison to the Czech Republic, Slovak Labour Code allows employment relationship between working time and job sharing already for some time. A reduced working time basically means that employers and employees may agree on a reduced weekly working time, and the time does not have to be distributed over uh, working days, uh, while employees are entitled to wage uh, corresponding to the, to the agreed uh, reduced working time. Uh, therefore, many employers experiencing uh, decrease uh, in demand and consequently decrease in their uh, employee workload may consider the reduced working time as an option in how to preserve the viability of their businesses. Uh, also, like job sharing means that to allow more employees to the reduced working time share the same work is also another option. Uh, so the employees distribute their time and the workload resulting uh, from uh, the same working position and themselves. The next slide. Uh, home office as currently prevalent arrangement uh, among employers generally means uh, that employees perform work from home or other agreed place only occasionally and in exceptional circumstances with the consent of the employer and under the agreement with the employer. Home office uh, usually represents a form of employee benefit and the type of work has to allow. Due to COVID-19 situation, the amendment to the Slovak Labour Code adopted in uh, April 2020, effective as of 4th April 2020, has introduced provisions dealing with home office dependent during declared uh, extraordinary situation and, and state of emergency. And this new provision so allow employers to unilaterally order home office and at the same time employees uh, whose type of work allows it are entitled to request a home office arrangement. Trend uh, we are experiencing now is that many employers have realized the benefits of home office and want to utilize this type of work as a permanent. However, as the home office is only temporary solution, it cannot be ordered permanently, and employers are forced to find other options such as homework or telework. Homework, according to Slovak law, it is an employment termination if the employee performs work for the employer at home or at other agreed place on the terms and conditions agreed in the employment contract. So, amendment to the employment contract is required in order to shift the employee to home work. Telework uh, is basically a work arrangement. For the Susanna, can you just a bit move closer to the microphone? It seems a bit of your voice lagging. Oh, okay. so, sorry. So, telework is basically is it better now? Absolutely. So, uh, telework is basically basically homework arrangement where employees use information technology to carry out their work. 
We think that uh, most of them what is currently performed via uh, information technology, so either telephones or PCs. So even if employers refer to home working, usually teleworking is actually concerned. What is recommended uh, and what we believe that employers should do, they should adopt measures to provide install or perform regular maintenance uh, of hardware and software to ensure protection of data processed uh, and used um, in the telephone and to inform um, employees of all restrictions on the use of hardware and software. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, concerning the development of the pandemic situation, as well as employment situation, we didn't prepare this timeline, which shows the main events uh, which took place during this year. Uh, COVID-19 first appeared in Slovakia on 6 March 2020, as presented on the slide. Uh, our former government responded to this quite swiftly and declared extraordinary situation already on the 12th of March 2020. Uh, the extraordinary situation uh, continues to this day. In the beginning of April, uh, amendment to the labor code was already adopted. Uh, this amendment number one to the labor code, as we call it for the sake of presentation, introduced provisions applicable uh, during the extraordinary situation. Uh, based on these provisions, the employers are allowed to unilaterally order home office to their employees, as Ivan already mentioned. Uh, this right uh, of the employer still exists uh, as, as the extraordinary situation continues to this day. On the other hand, and from the practical point of view, it is important to remember that also employees are entitled to home office during the effectiveness of, of these provisions, newly introduced during the extraordinary situation. Uh, if their type of work, of course, allows it, and there are no serious operational reasons on the part of the employer which wouldn't allow such arrangements. Uh, currently, uh, another amendment to the labor code is being discussed. Uh, the proposed effective date is 1st March 2021, but it's still under discussion. Uh, this uh, second amendment, as we call it, focuses mainly on homework and telework. And uh, we believe that if adopted, it will clarify both of these institutes and their regulation and adapt them to today's needs of the labor market. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in order to summarize both of the amendments, uh, uh, once again, amendment number one to the labor code uh, allowed employers to unilaterally order home office in the beginning of the pandemic, and they still have this right as the extraordinary situation continues. And employees are also entitled to home office uh, as long as the extraordinary situation continues and their target work allowed. On the other hand, draft amendment number two to the labor code intends to significantly amend both homework and telework regulation. And the most crucial change is that it removes the ambiguity regarding scheduling of the working time uh, because it allows to agree on flexible working time, both for homework as well as telework. Uh, thus, uh, for example, should the employer prefer flexible working time? Uh, with some boundaries instead of allowing the employees to schedule the working time themselves as it was until now, there will be such options. Uh, deviations from the labor code, which are commonly applicable in favor of homework and telework uh, when the employees schedule their working time themselves, will not apply in case of flexible working time will be chosen by the employer uh, for, for the particular employee. This amendment number two also introduces the employer's obligation to provide compensation to employees for increased costs uh, if employees use, use their own equipment. And uh, on the other hand, also employees should be entitled not to use their working equipment during continuous daily and weekly work rest. So it's, it is the right to switch off and they cannot be punished by the employer for not using the, the equipment after, after their working hours. Uh, as regards the practical insights, I would quote my, my colleagues. <laughs> so, as we experience uh, with the employers, uh, the attempt and attempt to shift their employees to permanent homework or telework arrangements, uh, we have some practical insights which should be considered, and those are 
shifting uh, to no more or telework uh, requires amendments to the public contract as it represents a change of the working condition. Therefore, employers uh, cannot take smooth transition for granted, um, and uh, every employee has to agree to such change. In addition, as the employer's decision to shift all employees to home work is considered a decision resulting in basic changes in the organization of work or in contractual conditions, the employer should consult such a decision in advance with employees' representatives to the point. It should be noted that employers are responsible for health and safety at the workplace under the general provision of the Slovak Labour Code, even in the case of homeowners and telemarketers, and it is highly recommended to adopt policies in this respect to prevent any occupational injury. Employers should also adopt measures and policies uh, dealing with the use of technical equipment, data protection, and restriction on use of hardware and software. Further, it might be uh, advisable to implement time recording system, if not implemented previously, in order to maintain at least some control over employees. Uh, we know that uh, before amendment number two uh, is adopted or was adopted and effective, home workers and teleworkers uh, schedule their working time during homework or telework themselves, which is at least uh, based on prevailing uh, sort of uh, public opinions or um, um, practical opinions, and this might not be suitable for employees. So I think this is all uh, for now from Slovakia, and thank you very much. Um, Zuzana Yazev, thank you for that. Um, we have some questions first, um, I'm going back to Sabina. Uh, uh, the, the question is that, um, how do you see um, the applicability of, of e-signatures and, and delivering um, amendments and employment-related documents by means of electronic communication? Uh -huh. uh, Unfortunately, uh, it is not really uh, it is not really used. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, going back to to, to Slovakia, um, um, Susanna, um, is that, um, what do you consider uh, the most important benefit of of the amendment number two uh, in in Slovakia, um, especially in connection with with, with homework? Uh, yeah, well, I, I believe that the most important benefit of the amendment number two, which is currently being discussed, uh, is that uh, it, it provides two options how time uh, working time will be scheduled during homework and telework. Uh, 
Uh, until now, it was unclear, and it, 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 the general public tends to believe that uh, there is only one option, and that was that employee schedule is working time himself. Uh, but uh, as of uh, the amendment, uh, there will be two options, and the uh, employer can either agree on uh, letting employees schedule his working time himself, or there will be other options to let uh, to implement flexible working arrangement. Uh, so it will be more suitable for employees, uh, for regular employees, when employer wants to have some control over the employee and wants to let him sit at his desk and work in particular hours of the day. So this is, I believe, the biggest uh, benefit that the amendment will to the table. Will oh. will bring to the table. Not yet. <laughs> We, we will see how it performs in, in reality. 